uh, in this lecture we will be studying about uh, different uh, performance curves that uh, are useful for economic uh, dispatch problem so first we will be studying about generator operating cost curve and then uh, three different types of performance curves will be studied uh, in that the first one is input output curve second one is incremental curve and third one is net heat rate curve so coming to the generator operating cost now whenever in an economic dispatch problem while studying the generator operating cost we only consider the thermal power station curve uh, we are, that is only considered for economic dispatch whereas when it comes to other conventional uh, generating stations such as hydro and nuclear we normally neglect the generating operating cost the reason behind it is in case of operating uh, in case of hydro power plant the operating cost is uh, or the maintenance cost or the operating cost is absolutely um, is approximately equal to zero so that is the reason why we neglect the hydro curve and coming to nuclear uh, power plant nuclear power plant will not be included for economic dispatch either we use the entire nuclear power plant to supply the load or it will not be included like if uh, one nuclear plant is having around uh, 500 megawatt of uh, capacity then entire 500 megawatt of that capacity will be used part of that uh, power output will not be used like unlike a thermal power plant or uh, the end uh, we use the entire rating of the nuclear power plant so that is the reason why it is always operated at constant power output so most of the base load is made up of nuclear power plant uh, because uh, the startup and the shutdown cost of nuclear power plant is very high so the frequent switching on and switching off of the power plant is not possible so that is the reason why we always make it use we always use it for the base load uh, power plant or the base load so hence always your nuclear power plant will have constant power output so such plants will not be included in the economic dispatch problem now coming to the generating operating cost so this is the curve for operating cost so here you can see that it is having a convex uh, structure uh, and it is uh, increasing so uh, there you can see that there are two limits on this particular curve one is the minimum value and second one is the maximum value every uh, generating unit will have these limits that is minimum generation and the maximum generation now this minimum generation when we speak uh, operating the any power plant below that minimum value will be considered as uneconomical now if I take thermal power plant as an example the 30 percent of the power output of the thermal power plant is used for other auxiliary uh, functions such as uh, it is used for uh, setting up the certain temperature in the boiler or uh, for condenser to maintain the condenser uh, pressure so for all that uh, uh, for all that purpose 30 percent of the power output is used so if uh, if you use the thermal power plant below the th below 30 percent then uh, uh, economical output power will not be available so we always uh, for every power plant we set certain uh, minimum value so that it, it will always be operated above that minimum value operating it below the minimum value will be considered as uneconomical and there are other two things which actually determine this minimum generation value that is fuel combustion stability and generator design capacity all this is dependent on the unit design how the thermal unit is has been designed now similarly another limit that we have is the maximum generation now this particular maximum generation it is dependent on the rating of the unit so if i say 2 megawatt unit so 2 megawatt is the maximum un uh, power the particular unit can generate anything greater than that we consider it to be overloading so always to avoid overloading of the unit and also to avoid uneconomical operation of the unit the uh, every generating unit is to be operated within the limit now that limit is given by p minimum 
that is minimum generation and p maximum that is maximum generation now this particular curve it is called as quadratic uh, cost curve so here it should be pgi square this has to be square So this is PGI square. So the cost function is defined as AI plus BI PGI that is the power output of the generating unit plus CI PGI square. Now AI, BI and CI are the constant. So we will uh, see in detail how these terms are uh, defined and what is the what is CI value, what is the unit of this function all that we will see it in the next topic. So so now uh, coming to the performance curve, there are three performance curve that we will be studying. First one is the input output characteristics of the thermal units. Uh, second one is the incremental curve. Third one it is the net heat rate or unit heat rate curve. So coming to input output characteristics of the thermal unit, it is simply a plot between the gross input and the output of the unit. Now this particular gross input it can be expressed in two ways. The first way is using British thermal units per hour that is heat input. So how much heat input we are giving to particular unit. So that is taken as the input. Okay and the second way of expressing the input is using operating cost rate that is uh, whatever value you get this h value when you multiply it with the fuel cost then we, you, we get the f value this is operating cost rate now this is dependent on the prorated operation and the maintenance cost of the unit so uh, when you draw an input output characteristic the y-axis can be either h value that is british thermal units per hour or it can be f value so if it is h value then you call it as heat input uh, the unit of which is btu per hour so this is h is hour here so british thermal unit is actually a conventional si unit which uh, tells us how much amount of heat will be generated from a given uh, fuel so that is expressed in terms of british thermal unit it is not it is uh, no, it is not an si unit it is a uh, very traditional uh, uh, unit uh, it is non si unit we call it as non si unit a traditional uh, non si unit used so uh, that is one way of expressing the input the second way of expressing the input is using f that is operating cost rate this is nothing but when you multiply this particular h value from the fuel cost so the fuel cost can be rupees uh, 1000 per kg or 1000 uh, 2000 per ton so if that value when you that is the fuel cost so if you multiply h with that particular fuel cost you get operating cost rate Clear. So now this is the unit of F is rupees per hour in Indian system or uh, in normally in some textbook you can find it as dollar per hour. It is depend on which country we are uh, referring to. In India this particular operating cost is referred as uh, the unit of this particular operating cost rate is rupees per hour. So again you can see there is no much difference between the input output curve and the operating curve. Again here you can find certain smooth convex curve. Now coming to this particular generator operating cost there will be certain discontinuity in the diagram. Now here in this particular curve no discontinuity has been included but certain in some cases you will find certain discontinuity because of the boiler operation. There are certain discontinuity but such discontinuities will not be observed in this particular input output uh, characteristics of thermal units. Now as I have told you the input uh, is a quadratic function of power output. So uh, every input or uh, both the input h as well as f can be expressed as quadratic function of the power output. PGI is the power output of that particular generating unit. If I consider I generating unit, so PGI is the power output. So H can be expressed as this particular quadratic function or you can either express F. So your Y axis can be either H or F. Now coming to X axis, it is always the output output in terms of megawatt there is no alternative or other way of expressing the output power we always express it in terms of megawatt so again here you can see there are certain minimum value 
and the maximum value. So this is the input output characteristics of thermal units. Coming to next performance curve, it is incremental curve. Now coming to incremental curve, you have two types. One is incremental heat rate curve and second one is incremental fuel cost curve. Now the difference between these two curves are based on which input you have considered in the input output characteristics. Now the incremental curve is actually the, uh, it is the uh, slope of the input output characteristic versus the power output. Now whatever slope you get from this particular curve, at each point you calculate the slope of the curve, that slope of the curve uh, versus the output uh, in terms of megawatt, you get incremental curve. Now if you, if you have expressed the input in terms of heat input that is uh, British thermal units per hour if you have expressed in terms of heat input then you get incremental heat rate if you have expressed the input in terms of rate of operating cost then you get incremental fuel cost curve so this is all dependent on uh, how you have expressed the input so both incremental heat rate and incremental fuel cost is same only difference is the way you have expressed the input. Now this particular curve is something that is widely used in economic dispatch problem. Now this x axis can be either DFI by DPI that is uh, uh, when you differentiate this particular function that is when you differentiate the operating cost rate you get the slope of that curve. So either it can be DFI by DPI or DHI by DPI. So if you consider this as your Y axis and power output as the X axis, then you get incremental heat rate. Then if you express DFI by DPI, that is uh, uh, DFI by DPI as the uh, Y axis and the output as output in megawatts as the X axis, then you get incremental fuel cost. Now, if you have incremental heat rate curve, if you multiply the X Y axis by the suitable fuel cost, that is this value, you have an incremental heat rate uh, curve. Uh, if you multiply the Y axis by fuel cost, then the resulting curve you get is incremental fuel cost. So both are same only with respect to it is it is different it is different with respect to how your y axis is been expressed. Clear. So this is the incremental curve. Now the next performance curve that we study here is net heat rate curve. Now this particular net heat rate curve is whatever fuel input we get. Now this is the fuel input we get. Now this fuel input will be divided by the power output. So if I consider that um, for around uh, for 10 megawatt of power, 20 uh, kilocalories of uh, fuel input is required, then 20 divided by 10. Okay, that is the heat rate. So this is given by heat rate. It is dividing the fuel input by corresponding power output. So you get certain value. That value versus the power output. If you plot a curve, you get net heat rate curve. Like uh, if I consider this input output characteristics. So this is one point. So this is one point you get. Now this will have certain uh, input value and this will have certain output value. Now if you divide H by P value, you will get certain uh, uh, value called as X. So so on X1. So so on for each point you will be calculating if this is X1, X1, X2, X3, X4, X5, X6. For each point you will be calculating the X value. Now that X versus power output will give you net heat rate curve. Now this is the reciprocal of usual efficiency characteristics. 
now uh, the mm, uh, this entire net heat rate is a function of unit design parameters uh, this particular curve is uh, dependent on these uh, factors that is initial steam condition stages of reheat reheat temperature condenser pressure complexity of feed water cycle so this particular curve is function of unit design parameters the reciprocal of this curve will give you the efficiency characteristics of the unit so in order to study the efficiency characteristics of any unit we go for net heat rate curve so uh, concluding the overall lecture so we have uh, basically four different types of uh, curves are discussed first one is the in, uh, generator operating cost now always we consider thermal unit because hydro power plant will have absolutely zero operating cost and nuclear power plant is always operated at constant power output due to which we don't include it in economic dispatch problem clear so only thermal units are included so only our uh, generating operating cost of thermal units are used for economic dispatch problem now these curves are been expressed as a quadratic uh, cost curve which is uh, convex in nature it will have certain minimum value and the maximum value it is always uh, desired or it is always the all all the integrating units are always operated within this particular limit the next uh, performance curve we have is the uh, coming to performance curves the first one we have is input output characteristics uh, the input can either be expressed with terms of uh, btu per hour or it uh, it can be expressed with uh, with respect to operating cost rate uh, the next one we have incremental curve which is uh, the slope which is the plot between the slope of the input output characteristic versus the output now if the slope if the input is expressed in terms of btu per hour then we then the curve is called as incremental heat rate if the input is expressed in terms of rate of operating cost then the curve is called as incremental fuel cost so this particular uh, uh, curve is widely used next we have net heat rate curve where uh, from the input output characteristics at each point we will be calculating h divided by p so h divided by p versus the power output will give us the net heat rate curve thank you